In the last 30 years, the world has made great strides towards gender equality and ending all forms of gender-based violence. But there are still myths and misconceptions within every culture and society that are stopping us from achieving that last mile. These myths need to be busted. And who better to help us bust these myths than young campaigners from across the region in a segment called Bust the Myth. Welcome everybody to the program. So I am going to be reading out to each of you five categories based on the most common misconceptions. Consent one time doesn't mean consent every time. Consent to one act doesn't mean consent to all acts. Being a woman is not consent. I'm just like smiling, loving, and doing a lot of things, but I'm actually hurt inside. You don't have to see bruises. You don't, you don't have to see someone's bleeding. When boys tease girls, they are just harmless fun. This is a red alert. This has been going around even back when I was in school. Take us back to the 90s. What was it like campaigning back then for women's rights? I watch young women now. They're so internet savvy. And in our time, there was a lot of effort that had to be put in to mobilize people, to get people, uh, first of all, interested in an issue. Second of all, to be willing to act on that issue. And third of all, to be willing to act publicly on that issue. Mm. So it was, it, it was quite an effort. Women who have suffered violence are beginning to be seen as survivors and not just victims. And, and there is an effort to support them so they can move from being victims to survivors. 25 years ago, we did not have internet and social media and, and you know, tech-based uh, you know, violence and harassment. But today, that's one of the biggest you know, issues we have, especially, I think, uh, overall for girls and women, but definitely for adolescents and, and young people. And when we addressed these adolescents and young people, we did not only address to the girls and young women, but also to the boys and young men. I want to break this cycle of violence so that when I grow up, I don't have to attend sessions about why gender-based violence still exists in our society. I want to, I talk to friends and reach out to as many people as possible to support this advocacy. I use my YouTube channel to invite as many students and also our teachers to support our cause. And I also want to encourage everyone to take steps, even if it's small, so that we can stop the cycle of violence. I think the generation now is much more articulate and able to um, voice these things much more clearly than we were. Um, I think, of course, we have to work across generations. And I'm glad to say that last year, um, at, the, at the initiative of younger women, we formed something called Feminists Across Generations, and which we call, in short, FemGen. So leaders have to make sure that uh, you know the veil is lifted, that uh, this is happening. This is it that affects everyone. Uh, at the same time, they have to, um, as I've said to a certain extent before, model behavior about how to deal with it. And, and one issue is lifting the veil, but another is putting in place uh, safe spaces for women to share the experiences. You can also be a part of our Mythbuster campaign by simply filming a 90 second video of yourself busting a myth Post it on social media with the hashtags BustMyth, 16 Days, and Game Changing. <laughs> <laughs>